All right, hello everybody, uh, Damon here. So um, today I got a question or saw a question about uh, using doing updates in S3. And this is a question that comes up pretty often and there's a bunch of new-ish technology uh, in, this, uh, in this space. And so one of those pieces of tech is Apache Hoodie. And Hoodie just released uh, 0.9.0 recently. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty fresh project. It's been around for a little bit, um, but it's becoming a pretty uh, common way to use Hoodie on top of an S3 data lake to uh, either stream incremental changes into S3 using CDC, which I did a data lab on this before. Um, so uh, that's uh, that's out there. And then um, uh, there's also Apache Iceberg and uh, Delta Lake by Databricks. So these are all pretty common ways and open source ways that you can layer ACID compliance and streaming changes into your data lake. Uh, there's a few differences between them, but they're, they're, they all have pretty common use cases. Um, I don't know Delta Lake as well, but I know between Iceberg and Hoodie, Iceberg is intended for really, really large tabular data in S3. That was kind of the generation of Iceberg was, hey, we've got, you know, terabytes and terabytes and petabytes and petabytes of data, and we need a better way to manage the metadata around that, around those tables. Um, Hoodie was really around, you know, incremental stream processing, uh, specifically taking, you know, CDC data and streaming that into your data lake or streaming small updates into your, into your data lake, but also optimizing the files behind the scenes. So I want to talk about that stuff today. So uh, let's get started. I'm going to tweet out this link. So just give me a second to do that. You can stare into my beautiful background here for just one second. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of tweeting because it is Wednesday at 1.30 and tweeting is, is what I do. Um, let's see. So I just need to go over here and get the link for this thing. Just taking a little bit. All right, here we go. Bam, okay. Let's do a quick tweet. All right, we'll see if anybody joins us. Uh, let's see. Let's hop back into. Uh, let's hop back into this. All right. So. All right, we'll just close that. Sweet. Okay, so uh, let me show up my laptop here. And so what we're going to do is um, I've got three different use cases that I want to try and figure out today. And for context, um, I've used Apache Hoodie uh, all of one time previously, and that was using um, a demo from the AWS Big Data blog. So there was a demo about um, CDC Apache Hoodie Big Data blog. Let's see if I can find it really quickly. Yeah, this one, this was pretty cool. Um, it gives a nice overview of using Hoodie to stream data from the database migration service into your S3 based data lake. In the past, this was something that was pretty hard, um, but with the Hoodie Delta streamer, it's ridiculously easy. So I did a, a live, um, live stream of this previously before, um, so feel free to check that out. But today I want to kind of start from scratch and just understand what's going on with Hoodie. So in the EMR documentation, um, we've got this Hoodie section here. We have a bit, bit of an overview about how Hoodie works and certain things that are important to know about it, like copy on write and merge on read. I'm not going to dive into that stuff today. I just kind of want to see what happens when I write Hoodie data sets. So um, I need to create a cluster with Hoodie installed. I already did that. So um, EMR installs Hoodie by default when you install Spark Hive or Presto. And I created a cluster that had, let's, um, you know, Hadoop, Hive, Spark, and Presto all on it at once. So I've got that cluster over here. And uh, you can see there's my Hoodie demo right there. 
and that's got all the uh, all the software I needed and I'm running on EMR 6.4. The other thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to use EMR Studio to do this. I'm going to do this in a Jupyter Notebook. So in the docs, we mentioned if you are using EMR Studio, you've got to just copy over a few uh, hoodie jars over to HDFS and then inside Studio, when you go ahead and fire that up, you just need to have that configuration in there. So I already copied those jars over on my cluster and I've got EMR Studio up and running. And so uh, before I get, well, actually, yeah. So I'll hop into um, into what this looks like pretty soon here. So if you haven't seen it before, I've got this intro to AWS Analytics uh, video as well. I'll just drop that in the chat. Um, whoops. Looks like I need to be uh, signed in to do the chat. So I will do that. All right, cool. So there is that link. And uh, if you haven't watched this video, it gives a good overview of how uh, different data lives and is processed in S3. And I've actually got um, a notebook here too that goes through this process. It's this um, on notebooks.decort.dev. Uh, it's this intro to data processing on AWS notebook. And it kind of goes through and it shows you, okay, you connect to Spark, uh, you read a big CSV file or TSV file, you convert it to Parquet. And so we're going to use some of that Parquet data later. But this is a good overview just in terms of like how, um, you know, data lives on S3 and how you convert Parquet data sets on S3. So let's get started with this, um, this hoodie overview from the EMR documentation. So I'm going to go ahead and write... Um, in here, they've just got like a default hoodie data set. And so I've got some sample code here that um, allows me to create a data frame. So I'm going to go over to my uh, EMR Studio, and I've got this configure block in here. So I've already executed that. And let me go and paste in this other code as well. And I think that should execute pretty quickly here. And this just needs, because I'm in a notebook instead of a shell, I just need to add a little um, parens around there. And then let's format this as well. Great. So now this is going to go in and I wonder if I need to uh, restart my kernel here. I might need to restart my kernel. Let's do that really quickly. So I'll do that configure. We will print hello. All right, come on, you little kernel, you can do it. Let's see, still connected to that cluster. And that should kick off soon here. I might just SSH into the cluster. Um, do a quick reload here. So while that's going ahead and reloading, um, I'll talk a little bit about what I want to do with this. So um, in the documentation, uh, it just goes through like creating a data frame and writing that out to a hoodie data set. And with Spark, you know, hoodie's kind of built into it. You just kind of, um, well, as long as you load the, the hoodie jars, of course, but you just specify the format of that, um, of that data frame. So you say, here's my Spark data frame. I'm going to use the hoodie format, and then I'm going to write it out to S3. And these are all the different hoodie options. So we're going to name the table, um, and you add some partitions to it as well. So in this case, that um, creation date is going to be a partition in S3. So it's going to kind of split up the data based on the uh, creation date there. So let's go ahead. Let's see how my Jupyter Notebook is doing here. For some reason, it is not liking me. Almost there. Okay, so let's go and specify my PySpark kernel. All right. I don't know what's going on with my network right now. I'm going to blame my live stream software. <laughs> All right, we'll try refreshing this one more time. If that doesn't work, I may just SSH into the cluster or um, 
connect in using my console here. Yeah, something's funky with my network here. So uh, let's see. All right, cluster, what's going on? Well, I apologize for this. Let's see if we can just uh, SSH in here and connect to, all right, let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead to those primary instances, load that up. Try to use session manager to go ahead and connect back to that. <laughs> Very exciting. All right, connect. Yeah, my poor little laptop does not really like everything that's going on right now. I don't know why it's not liking this. All right, let's try. Nope. I feel like my uh, my primary node is having an issue right now. So what I might do, let me go back to my cluster here. I'll go ahead, try and clone this cluster, maybe spin up a bigger primary node. I'm not sure what is going on. So of course, uh, as with all live demos, we're going to have to uh, kind of wing it here. So I'm going to make a slightly larger. Uh, we'll go with a C5 2XL. I think the C5 XL should have been fine, but we'll just, we'll just go ahead and uh, spin that up as well. So that'll take a few minutes to go ahead and create. So let's see how that goes. Um, back here. Yeah, I apologize. I'm not sure what's going on here. I still can't connect to that cluster. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, what I might do, let's see. Kind of need that cluster to do anything. <laughs> oh boy, I guess it is Wednesday, right? Um, while that other cluster is coming up, let me look through here. So I've got these data frames. Um, I can look through there and that will write it to a table. One thing I'm doing with this cluster as well is I'm connecting it to the glue data catalog. And I already, I already ran through this, uh, this first one here and wrote that to a bucket. So in theory, um, I should actually have this table inside of my data catalog. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that too. So in my data catalog, here's my hoodie table, awesome. So let me go back to the docs. So I took this uh, data frame, I went ahead and um, created that data set and wrote it out to S3. So let's see what that looks like as well really quickly. Um, luckily I already did this first step. I was gonna try and do it live, but uh, you know, uh, live coding, things happen. So uh, this is the location that I wrote it out to on S3. I just kind of wrote it out to this My Hoodie data set 001. And you can see there's a bunch of hoodie, um, different hoodie metadata stuff there. So there's this uh, hoodie commit file. Uh, there's these hoodie property files and hoodie partition metadata. So let's uh, let's just copy down one of those hoodie metadata files and kind of see what that is. So if I just copy that locally, um, you can see where hoodie is writing some additional metadata into S3 right alongside the parquet files and right alongside the uh, partitions. So it gives me the commit time and the parti partition depth. So there's not much in there, uh, at least not right now. And then if we look at the parquet files too, so uh, this is a pretty small data set. It only wrote two parquet files and they're pretty small. And if I copy one of those down to, uh, let me do that. Let's see, 01, 
uh, E42. Okay, so I copy that Parquet file down and I can use uh, the Parquet CLI tool to get some metadata about that file. And so if I do that, what we can see, there's a bunch of metadata in this file. Uh, there's the Parquet Avro schema. So that's giving me the schema of the uh, of the records in this file. You can see there's some, uh, there's actually in the schema, there's some hoodie metadata. So this is used by hoodie to filter out different things or, um, you know, uh, just kind of help, uh, help hoodie run. And then these are the actual fields in the uh, data frame that I wrote to that file. And then this is just some samples of the data that's in that file. So you can see the creation date field, um, the min and max of that because we're in that uh, 2015-0101 partition. You can see the average size of records in that column. This is all kind of you know metadata stored in the, the Parquet file. So now, like I said, um, I ran this command, I wrote out my hoodie table, and I wrote that out to S3, and on the EMR cluster I'm using um, glue as my data catalog. So when I wrote out this hoodie table, it updated the glue data catalog to point to hoodie. And if everything works well, I should be able to read this hoodie um, data set from Athena as well. So the table is at least in there. I can do a preview of that table. And actually, let me, let's do a generate, um, let's do a show create table because that's pretty interesting too. Um, so we have, here's the external table, my hoodie table. We can see the row format, Saturday is Parquet, and then the input format is hoodie. So here's where you can see that the actual table format is hoodie and then the location on S3. So if we're lucky, we should just be able to do a select star from that and run and get some data. And you can see now we can actually query that data from Athena as well. And there's you know some of the hoodie metadata um, records in there. But then this is the data that we updated on, uh, you know, using our, our Spark code. So that's one really nice way that when you're writing this to S3, um, Athena also has hoodie support built in, so it can read that data from S3 too. But let's see uh, if our cluster is doing any better at this point. <laughs> and uh, let's see if that other cluster has come up yet. Looks like it's still starting. Well, let me see if I can just disconnect and reconnect to the other cluster. Cool, so I'm detached from that first cluster. And it's gonna go ahead and refresh. And it doesn't look like that's there yet. Let me just do a quick refresh of the cluster list. Okay, it is there. Let's see if I can connect to that. It might not have everything up and running yet, but it looks like it might. So while that's attaching, I'm gonna to try to go over here. And again, on the primary node, I just need to do um, copy some, some of those hoodie jars over to HDFS so I can actually use this in EMR Studio. So let's go ahead and do that super quick as well. Cool, so we'll go ahead, we'll connect. Awesome, so let's switch over to the Hadoop user. And let's go back here and let's uh, copy those jars over super quick. So we'll do this, make that, ah, HDFS isn't up yet. Okay, close, but not quite. So we gotta wait for the uh, the core nodes to come up. So we'll go ahead and we'll wait for those to come up. That should be up pretty shortly here. Um, so back over, yeah, see it's still attaching there, okay. So once that comes up, the other thing I'm gonna do is just show how to go ahead and um, insert or update data in the hoodie data set. So if we scroll down a little bit here, we've got this upsert uh, example here where we can actually um, take our existing data frame and add, uh, take that creation date and add a different creation date to it. And then uh, what this does, this just takes one record and updates that creation date and let's, uh, and then again, uh, just writes that out to the same location and does an upsert. So you kind of have to specify the operation as part of your, your Spark code there. Let's go ahead and see how this is doing. I always love the, uh, the tap dancing step when uh, you're waiting for things to, things to complete. <laughs> I did want this to be a real true live stream though, because um, 
I haven't worked, like I said, I haven't worked with Hoodie much. And so I kind of wanted to just take this from, from zero to, um, to live and see how it, see how it goes. Um, you know, it looks like I, you know, definitely need to work on making sure I have the right cluster resources up and running. So uh, that's something that's a little fun, but let's take a look at that cluster too. Um, like I mentioned, I've got Spark on there, Jupyter Enterprise Gateway, so I can connect to it with EMR Studio, and then Presto in case I want to, you know, show some uh, fancy SQL queries. Um, but I'm using Athena to query that data set anyway. And then when I created this cluster, the other thing that I did was I told it to use Glue as the as the data catalog. So if I go to the cluster that's up and running already and look at the configuration there, you can see for Hive and Presto and Spark, um, there's these different properties here where you can tell it to use the Glue data catalog. So I went ahead and did that. And that means, you know, as I'm adding these data sets, that's updating the Glue data catalog. That can be read from other EMR clusters, that can be read from Athena, that can be read from Redshift. Um, so uh, that just makes it so we can use those all over the place. All right, let's go back to my cluster here. There we go. Okay, so this new one is up and running. Awesome. I've got my cluster attached. I've got PySpark. Um, that should go and execute now. And let's just do hello hoodie. So that's going to go ahead, start a Spark app on that cluster. And then um, once that's done, it'll print out hoodie. Oh, no. Oh, you know what I need to do? I need to uh, copy over those files. So HDFS is up now. Let me go ahead and copy those jars to HDFS. Okie dokie. If you were doing this in production, you could easily make a, um, a step on the EMR cluster to do this on any um, EMR cluster you wanted to use with EMR Studio or Notebook, um, but I'm just doing this manually right now. So let's go ahead, we'll try this again. We'll reconfigure Spark. Um, yeah, percent, percent configure dash F. Awesome. So that'll create me a new Spark app. And ideally, that should spin up there. So let me go back to that cluster. And I'm going to load up um, my Spark history server from there, too. Okay, let me go ahead and just restart my kernels. Okay. We'll reconfigure that. We'll print hello hoodie. Okay, cool. We're getting Spark started again. And hopefully now that we have the jars on the actual cluster, um, that should spin up and print hello pretty quickly here. So the other thing that I'm doing is, oh yeah, there's all that stuff. Um, uh, with EMR, one of the things that was added uh, maybe like a year ago was these persistent interfaces. Um, so this EMR cluster is on a private subnet, um, not accessible from the internet, uh, which if you want to use you know, the Spark History server or the Yarn Timeline server can make it kind of hard, right? But we've added these persistent user interfaces that you can click and open um, without having to be SSH'd into the cluster. So I can open that. Um, this is my Yarn app. You can kind of see there's my application there. Um, and the status of it and you know any containers that are running and all that kind of stuff. Similar with Spark. So um, I just popped open the Spark history server. This is my cluster. Um, it updates about every 30 seconds, I think it is. So um, sometimes you won't see um, you know real time as you're running things, but uh, we you know tell you when we last updated it there. So um, now that we've got uh, this up and running, awesome, that worked. And uh, now you can see Hello Hoodie. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and um, copy in this code here to go ahead and just let's start from scratch again. So, whew, all right, see how well this goes. Let's go ahead and create that data frame. So I'll put this here and I need to add in my personal bucket as well. So I'll just go ahead and create that. And let's format this code really quickly just because I love formatted code. And again, uh, there's the table name and um, some of the partition information about it. I don't know what's going to happen um, with this table uh, because I already kind of uh, created it 
Uh, but let's let's just go ahead and see what happens. So here's my data frame. I've got three different fields, and I'm going to create this hoodie data set and just overwrite uh, what's there. So if I go back to my console here, let's do an S3 LS of that location on S3, and we should see it cleared out. So now we don't see any uh, Parquet data in there at all. We do see some hoodie information. So if I try to copy that file over, uh, let's see here my hoodie data set and then hoodie properties let's see what's in there just for just for fun so that's got a bunch of different uh, hoodie properties in there and these are just kind of metadata about the hoodie table um, so we can see here it's a copy on write table the table version is one um, and so these are where you know this is where different metadata about that table will live if we do another s3 ls now that Spark has written out the data, we should see some Parquet files. So this is the stuff that we saw earlier. So there's a couple Parquet files. And we can see it's also partitioned by that second column, the creation date. So there's um, 2015-0101 and 2015-0102. Awesome. So that finished. Um, if we go back to the docs, now we'll look at the example of how to update uh, this data. So let me copy that, create a new cell here paste that in there. We do need um, to import this lit function here. So we'll go ahead and import lit and we're going to take one, um, one row from that data frame and in the creation date column we're going to change it to, let's change it to today. So we'll do 2021-09-22. I uh, can't believe it's September already but here we are. And then we're just going to write this back to, um, back to S3. And so this is where the magic is going to kind of come in. And um, what I'll do first, I'm actually going to, let's do update df.show because uh, I just want to be able to, sh to show you what uh, column we're updating here. Okay, so here is record 100, right? And the creation date is going to change from uh, let's see if we go back to Athena record 100 was at a creation date of 2015-0101 and if we go back here um, we're going to change this creation date to today for record ID 100. So let me go ahead and get the right S3 um, information there. And so this is really useful uh, when you need to update records in, in S3. Previously if you had to update a record in S3 and that Parquet file, what you were going to have to do was take that Parquet file, read all of the data in it, and that, you know, in this case that's pretty small, but that could be hundreds of um, megs or gigs of data, and then write it back to S3, all while maintaining consistency um, with that data set. So in the past, I would recommend that, you know, folks could swap out partitions while they were doing this, you know, read the data from one partition, write out an entirely new partition, and then swap the partition under the hood. But it's really hard to do um, well, and it's really hard to do while maintaining consistency and correctness in your data. So what this is part of what Hoodie helps you achieve is you can go ahead and you can do these upserts and it maintains that as part of the Hoodie data set. So this, is, this Spark job is gonna go and just kind of update that one record and so when that is done, we're going to go look at the data on S3 and kind of see uh, what's happening there. And you can see there's a bunch of different um, bunch of different Spark things kind of happening behind the scenes here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of collapse that, and we'll see how this finishes. So I'm going to do an S3 LS right now and see what's going on here. So we should, at the very least, have a new Parquet file, and we do. So we have this 2021-0922 Parquet file. I think we should only have one um, one record in that, but let's take a quick look at that just to see uh, what's going on there. So we'll do that. We'll copy this file locally. And since I haven't really done this before, um, I'm not sure what this is gonna look like. So we're gonna look at that meta for that file. This should only have one record in there, but it says, yep, okay, cool. So we have one record in there. And if we just do a uh, parquet cat of that file, you can see there's my one record in there. So there's my record and uh, you know my ID is 100, the creation date is now updated. If we look back at S3 again though, let's look at S3. 
Um, and let's look at this one. And we can see that this file here is not updated. So that's kind of interesting, right? Because um, we still have the same Parquet file out there on S3, but we've updated the data. Um, and this job is done. So if I do a, a select star from Athena again, let's try this. I don't need me my columns over here. Uh, if I do a select star from Athena from my hoodie table, we see um, we've got our uh, ID 100 here, and the creation date is uh, you know is updated, but we also see it right there too. So it doesn't look like that is updating for some reason. Um, there might be something else I have to do there. Let's take a look because it might be um, the, I think I, uh, let's see, copy on, copy on right. Interesting. So I'll have to check that out. I'll have to see um, what's supported there because I think we're still getting that parquet file right there. But uh, in theory, you could start. Okay, cool. Save mode append. The record should be, oh, the record should be appended, okay. Okay, this is creating a new data frame, got it. So, um, okay, so this kind of added a new a new record in there. Okay. Got it. Um, we could delete records if we want to as well. And so if I actually go in there and do, let's see what happens when we do that delete. Let's see, so I'm gonna go in here and bring that back to Jupyter and let's do a delete in there. I told you I'm still learning about this. So I'm still figuring out how this works too. All right, so, and that just puts a empty hoodie record payload in there. So let's read about that for a second. Um, to hard delete a record, you can upsert an empty payload. Got it. You can also hard delete data by setting operation opt key to delete operation balance, remove all records in the data set you submit. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and actually, you know what? Snapshot query. Yeah, let's do, let's do a quick read before we do that delete because I'm kind of curious. Um, what happened in between there. So snapshot query DF, let's go ahead and read that data. Ooh, interesting, okay, cool. Okay, cool. So, oops, that's right, we're in the notebook, we gotta add those extra, extra things there. So is this gonna have both records as well? I'm not sure. It does, okay. Got it, so I bet if we did something other than an upsert, uh, we could kind of overwrite that record, or sorry, something other than an append, we could overwrite that record. I'll have to look into that a little bit uh, later just to see what's going on there. Uh, but now if I go ahead and uh, delete that data, so this is doing an upsert with an empty uh, record payload. And then I'm gonna take this query and run it again once that's done. So we'll go ahead, we'll do that, and we'll wait for that to finish. And if I go back to S3, let's see what's going on here. Now we've got two Parquet files uh, in, this, uh, in this location. So you can kind of see uh, it took that additional record and wrote it out over there. So let's do an S3 copy of that again. And we'll copy that down. And now if we do a parquet cat of, uh, let's do the 5B one, oops. I need 82, there we go. So now that file doesn't actually have anything in it because we upserted that. And so this is essentially going to overwrite that file. Um, let's see if there's anything specified in the partition metadata about that. I don't know if there will be. Um, but we will try to see if there's anything interesting in there. Because what is going to happen here, 
commit time is right there. Um, Parquet's got all this additional data here. So every time we kind of do this, like this new write or something like that, um, it's got these commits um, that it's, it's almost like a commit log, if you will, that tells you kind of the state of the data set. So that's how um, Hoodie is is kind of managing these different Parquet files and, and merging all this data. And you can see even while it was um, writing that data set, it's writing out these temp files too to S3 to kind of say like, hey, we're, we're merging this data or um, we're working on this data. So that is how Hoodie essentially goes and does that. Now we can see um, there's our Hoodie record key. The, the, um, the double 100 is gone there and our original creation date is back. So if we go back to Athena, ideally, when we run this, we should see just that single 100 record and we do. Okay, cool. Awesome. That's exactly what I wanted to see. So um, even though all those Parquet files still exist, so if we do an S3 LS again, uh, what's happening is Hoodie is writing out this metadata and when uh, a system that reads that um, table supports Hoodie, it knows how to kind of put all these different files together. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Awesome. That is step one. Awesome. Okay, cool. Incremental queries. Oh, nice. So you can get a stream of records that have changed since a given commit timestamp. Sweet. So if I do that, begin instant time. What do I need to... Instant time. Oh, yeah. You know what I probably need to do? So let's go back there. Um, but do 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 so uh, from that, we can actually say, like, show me everything that was queried from, you know, a uh, certain timestamp. So I don't know which value to kind of put in here. I'm just going to copy and paste from there. And in theory, this might show us, um, yep, let me just add that. Okay, so let's do 2021-09-22, I think. Okay, there we go. Got it. So and if I do something like 2021, that shows me that. Okay, cool. That's pretty neat. What if I put like zero. <laughs> I would think it would show me, got it, query data set incremental, 10 times more efficient than their batch counterparts. Awesome. I think where this comes in handy, let me, um, Save mode append, or the record should be appended. I wonder what happens if I overwrite it. Uh, let's see. Hoodie. Hoodie, upsert, over, uh, overwrite. Because I don't want to append it. I want to want to overwrite it. All right. So there's the upsert. Cool. Delta streamer. Data source writer syncing to Hive. Yeah, I'm gonna have to um, find a little resource in terms of how to how to update it. All right, so that was pretty cool because we got all that stuff in there. Um, we did a hoodie upsert where we added a new row uh, with that new creation date. Uh, we went ahead and queried that. Uh, we were able to delete that as well. And then we can see all the different files on S3. And so we can see all this different Parquet, all the different Parquet files there. I wonder if there's another one or if that's just all that we have right now. Okay, that's all of it. And then all these different um, commit files, it's essentially like a commit log. So what I wanna do next, I wanna mess around a little bit with the Hoodie um, command line interface. I'm gonna go back to my SSH console here. 
and there's a hoodie uh, CLI. And so if you drop into that, um, I, let's see, so there's a whole bunch of different things in here. So you can actually, you know, like look at all your save points, for example. Um, so save points, show, let's see, okay, there's no hoodie table, oops. Please use connect command. Okay, I need to uh, use my connect command. Let me see that. Where is the connect command? There we go. Okay, connect. How do I use this? Help with connect. Okay, cool. So connect to a hoodie table. So I'm going to need to do connect um, base path of the table. I wonder if, uh, is that going to be my S3? base path I think so cool that actually loaded up my hoodie table awesome sweet so that actually like opens up the hoodie properties tells me the table type and now I should be able to actually say like save points show okay I've got no save points in there um, but what I want to see is like show log file metadata sh oh, see that's pretty cool Log file path pattern, okay. I need to read up a little bit more on the hoodie. Um, show FS view all. Nice, what does that do? Interesting. Uh, I think I need to um, partition path 2015-0101. Got it. Yeah, I need to figure out how to how that CLI works. So I'll do that at, at some other point. Okay. So that is just kind of getting started with Hoodie, um, using it in Spark to work with the Hoodie data set. Oh, here's um, here's the CLI. Okay, cool. So connect path. Got it. Okay, that just tells me how to go ahead and connect to it. So I already did that. Um, the CLI docs have some good information there too. So inspecting commits, drilling down, file system view. Ah, got it. So I can do like a description of the table. Oops. Let's do that. Description. Cool. So there is the base path, file system, table name. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I'm just going to move this over. Connect path. Help. Inspecting commits. Yeah, see, that's kind of neat too. I don't know if that will show me anything here. Okay, cool. Yeah, see, there we go. Nice. So we've got our commit time, total files added, updated, total partitions written. Awesome. So you can kind of go in here and inspect all these different commit files. There we go. See, you can even see where it's reading those from. Sweet. Okay, so that's that. You can drill down to a specific commit to see what it did, which is pretty awesome. Um, my show file system view isn't really doing much, so I'm not sure what's going on there. I wonder if I need, when I connect, I probably need to do that now. Okay. And then stats, file sizes, partition path. That's pretty cool too. I wonder if um, my partition path is actually going to be slightly different. So 2015-0101, I think. Sweet. So there's the commit time. Oh, nice. Okay. And if I change this to a different partition, like 2021-09-22, we've got that. Awesome. So that shows my two different commit times. And the different uh, file sizes. Awesome. Ah, this is um, this is what I want to do. Compactions. So this is one nice thing about Hoodie as well is uh, you can essentially compact the data. Not essentially, you can. Oh, compactions can only be run for table type merge on read though. Bummer. Okay. No, that's good to know. Copy on write, merge on read. Okay, cool. So yeah. I'll have to um, check that out at some point. I'll have to, you know, look and learn to understand more about the different table types um, because right now I, I don't at all. So 
uh, we'll go ahead and, and do that. Next, I want to look into importing some existing Parquet data. So uh, inside the hoodie CLI, there is this HDFS Parquet import command. So in my previous um, video here, I converted some data sets to Parquet. Uh, let's say I want to read in this Parquet data set and import it into Hoodie. So let me pop back over to the CLI here, and I'm just going to exit out of it first. And let's do HDFS Parquet import. Cool. So that's all the different stuff that I need to do there. Um, migration. Yeah, cool. Cool, let's give this a shot. Um, I'm gonna need to just put this command together um, for myself a little bit. So let's copy this because I'm gonna uh, use something like that. So I'm gonna do an HDFS Parquet import, upsert false source path is going to be, um, I need to go back to my bucket, MRDA demo. Uh, let's see, intro to data processing, Parquet. Okay, cool. So I've got a few different Parquet data sets in here. And what I'm actually going to use, I'm going to use this one that's got like 35 uh, files in it, or 34 objects, I should technically say. Sweet. So this is my Parquet data set. Let's say I have this already existing on S3. So my source path is going to be there. And then my target path is going to be, let's just write it to a temp location for right now. And we'll do um, temp, yeah, um, data proc hoodie 002. Cool. So there's my target path. And let's see, table name. DEA database. This is the, um, I used a um, database from the Washington Post called the DEA pain pills database. It's a huge database of different pain pill transactions um, that they use to track the opio opioid crisis. So um, that's what I'm using for this. Uh, let's do a merge on read. Okay. And the different table types are used for different use cases. I'm pretty sure that the hoodie documentation goes over uh, what the best use cases are for each different table type. But for this one, I'm going to do a merge on read. Uh, my row key field is, oh boy, let's see. Um, intro to data proc. Let's take a quick look at this data set. Uh, my row key field is, I don't even know if I have a row key field in here. Fire zip, transaction code, NDC number, order form number, transaction date. I think I have like a transaction ID. Yeah, let's do transaction ID. So transaction ID. Got it, so we'll come back over here and do transaction ID, okay. We need a partition path field. So if we wanna partition this data, uh, let's actually partition it by, let's see if there's something good in here. Let's do buyer state. Um, let's say we want to try to uh, aggregate there. Most of the queries on this data are going to be, you know, based on query state or buyer state. Uh, parallelism, 1500, schema file path. I don't think I have that, unfortunately. I don't know if I need that. Let's give it a shot without it and see if we do. Uh, format parquet, spark memory, and retry. Let's I do need uh, schema file path and Sparkmaster. I need a whole bunch of other stuff in there. Okay, this might require a little bit more 
um, a little bit more research before I can use the uh, parquet CLI command in order to do that. So um, let's see. Let's see if there's any EMR info on that. Okay, import. Okay, I'll need to do a little bit of research to see how to actually use that command. Um, oh, there might be. Here we go. Start Spark job. Yep. This is just the, I feel like this is the exist, existing documentation. Okay, yeah, this is just the existing docs. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and try to figure out um, how to actually craft the proper command for that. Um, but in the meantime, one of the things that was introduced in um, Hoodie 06 um, was actually importing Parquet data without having to convert it. So the, if you have a huge data lake, uh, this is something that is actually pretty convenient um, because you can bootstrap an existing Parquet data set but you don't have to copy over the actual file. So I'm going to give this a shot too. So let me see how well this is going to work. And let's see, two modes for the bootstrap operation, metadata only, and then full record. Okay, cool. So copies over the source data to a single file using bulk insert or insert operation. Okay, cool. So I'm going to try and do the full record. Okay, cool. Let's see if I can do this in my Jupyter Notebook. I think this is actually Scala code. Um, let's see if I can convert it into Python. So uh, similar to this, we're going to say, let's read in an existing uh, Parquet data set. And we're going to write this out to a new hoodie table. So we'll do this. Um, and let's, uh, let's clean this up for our... Okay, so there's that, um, and I need to, yeah, I'm just going to need to make that a, uh, yeah, just a proper hoodie options. So let's go with this, and we'll do hoodie configs is equal to that, and we'll do, oh man, um, All right, where are all those defined? That might be data source right options. Bummer. Um, I have to like Google for some of this info. Uh, let's see, hoodie configurations. Let's see. Data source right options. Uh, where can I get that? This is all in Scala as well, isn't it? Um, Let's see, hoodie, GitHub. All right, I'm gonna go and search for uh, my options in here, data source write options. I should actually be able to just pull up data source write options. Not in there. Okay, record key. Okay, cool, there we go. Interesting. Key generator options, data source options. Scala, and we'll go down here. Interesting key generator. All right, I wonder if I can import these into my PySpark code, or if I have. Um, I might be up here. Yeah. So there's hoodie data source write record key field. I think that's probably what I'm going to need. Um, Operation opt key. Okay. What I might do is just, uh, yeah, create. Yeah, let me just, let's see, how easy would it be to do this in Scala? So, Spark Shell, Emer Notebooks. Okay. Yeah, let's try and do this. Um, let's try and do this with us with a new notebook. So let me go here, um, new notebook. Let's do a Spark one. 
There we go. Okay. And so if we're doing this with a new notebook, we need to import all this stuff. Man, I've been at this for an hour, huh? <laughs> all right. So let's go back to here. I'll copy in this Scala code. And that is starting up the Spark application. We'll paste all this stuff in here. Here is our, how do you know the member of package org dot Apache? Well, that's not good. Um, oh, you know what I need to do? I think, yep, hold up. Uh, let's restart my kernel. It's fine. I needed to put that uh, config block in there, so let me do that. Okay. Um, that'll start up the Spark application again. And in theory, we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and paste in uh, the source parquet path and the uh, target location. And then my record key, what did I say I was going to use for my record key? Uh, transaction ID. Yep. Okay. So cool. That imported fine this time. So there's my record key. Um, this is going to be yep, my, my hoodie, my migrated hoodie table. Okie dokie. Cool. Format hoodie, format configs, and sweet. So in theory, when I hit go here, this should, um, class of simple key generator, hoodie bootstrap config. I think I need to import some, I need to do some additional imports here. Okay. Where are you? Uh, let's see, import hoodie bootstrap config. Like all good developers, we're just going to do some Googling. So this is org Apache hoodie config. Okay, cool. Import org Apache hoodie config, hoodie bootstrap config. Okay, and then simple key generator. Where is that? Do, 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 do. Org Apache, okay, cool, sweet. So import that as well. A couple imports left out of the blog post there, no worries. Oops, uh, key gen, simple, key generator. All right, cool. Oh man, um, forget the proper Scala syntax, is that gonna do it? I think that'll do it. Okay, cool. So in theory, this should be spinning up a Spark job here. Yep, there we go. Okay, so awesome. That's going, it's got a whole bunch of tasks. The default parallelization is 1500. Oh, and it failed. Bummer. Let's see what happened there. Operation has failed. Thank you. What did I do? Uh, record key value null, cannot be null or empty. Well, that is extremely unfortunate, but good to know. Um, let's look at my data set here. DEA number, transaction code, action indicator. Wait a second, why do I have two? Oh, transaction code and transaction ID. Interesting. Uh, let's see, how many nulls do I have here? Um, where transaction ID is null. Actually, I think, I think that's just a string, so I don't know if that's gonna. Oops. 
null. Oops, I need the proper syntax there. Let's see if any are actual nulls. Hmm, interesting. Let's go back here. Transaction ID got a null. All right, I might not be able to do this right now. And I'm curious what file that was on because if I look at that data set, I mean, that's, uh, that's just over here. There is a success file. I don't think that would be causing an issue. Transaction ID. Yeah, that's the proper field. Uh, let's see. Just need a count star. Uh, let's do a transaction ID. And I think, yeah, it's a string. So instead of that, let's do where uh, limit 10. Length of transaction ID. Let's see how that goes. Okay, cool. So, click star from there. From where? Length of transaction ID. Let's just say less than two. Uh, where are you? Transaction ID less than one. Interesting. We don't have any null transaction IDs. All right. So what's going on? There is our data. I'm going to just for the heck of it. Well, let's see. Did we write anything out yet? Let's see if we wrote anything out. And um, we did start to write out some parquet files, so we got kind of far through it. Uh, I think this is our app here. Collect, yep, failed. Why did you fail? Success, success, success. Failed, yep, there's all the failures. Uh, do I have any logs here? Let's see. Nope, I do not, unfortunately. Um, okay. Well. Let's, just in case, I don't think that would be... That shouldn't be doing anything, but just in case, let's take out that success file. I don't think that would do anything, but you never know. And really, that's just a marker to let me know that that job finished uh, when I was converting it before. So, <laughs> let's see how this does. Yeah, I'm still failed. Okay. Well, that's pretty unfortunate. 
Is that the same? Do, 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 yep, null for field transaction ID cannot be null or empty. Okay, well that is very unfortunate. Bootstrap df dot write. Source data path. Oh, wait a second. Did I? Bootstrap based path prop. Yeah, it's in there. Okay. Hmm. All right, well, I will have to dig into that as well to figure out kind of what's going on there. All right, just for the fun of it. Yeah, we can do that too. Um, where did I see? <clears throat> There's somewhere I saw to convert a table. I'm not sure where that is now. Okay. Well, I think I'll probably pause for now. Um, there's been some, some good learnings. I've got some homework to take home. Otherwise, they wouldn't call it homework, except for the fact that I'm already home. I know, I'm hilarious. Um, let's go back here for a second. I really want to try and figure out how to make this work. Record key, field, opt key. Yeah, the bootstrap is interesting because it's, let's see, hoodie configs, base path. Yeah, I'm really confused what's going on there. I wonder what, um, let me try copying over, copying down one of these files. S3 copy, do, 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 and let's do that one. Yeah, like what's in these? What is in these files? All right. Um, all right. So I've got some homework. Um, this has been fun. I uh, I have a lot to learn about hoodie, and I will need to spend some time figuring out all these different commands and switching between uh, PySpark and Scala and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, so in the meantime, um, you know, thanks for joining. Uh, for those of the folks, those of you that popped in. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I hope to put out some more